that's an original. Indeed. The original sweet pickle. First made in the village of Branston in 1922. Been in the family long? Since Tuesday. Ah, nicely turned neck. The cross and black will markings. And inside, all those fruity, tangy, chunky bits. It's unique. Worth a lot? Priceless. Bring out the Branston, the original from Cross and Blackwell. Hi and a huge welcome to Steve's Kitchen. Today I'm going to make the long awaited for Branston pickle recipe. It's going to be a lot of fun, it's not too complicated and it tastes delicious. Come on, let's get a make Branston pickle. <music> The original Branston pickle recipe was made in the village of Branston when it was bought by Cross and Blackwell and it used to in my mind be a lot nicer than it is today. Now it's changed hands several times over the last few years. Cross and Blackwell uh, no longer make it and I'm going to try and recreate the original Branston pickle recipe so it's not so baby food, not so sort of acidic as I think it is at the moment. So let's get on. I'm going to put the full list of ingredients up on the screen now so you can make a note of them or you can get across to steveskitchen.com where they're all written out for you and now let's get on and construct our Branston pickle. Place your soft brown sugar into a saucepan. I'm also going to add a couple of tablespoons of dark molasses just for colouring really more than anything else and next our malted vinegar. Pour that in the pan. Now this spice is called allspice. We want two teaspoons of that. I'm going to add it in there. It is not mixed spice, it's allspice. A couple of tablespoons of dark mustard seeds and a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Season with a teaspoon of salt. I have three tomatoes here. Now we're just going to cut these up. Um, they don't have to be cut up too small. Add them in with our sweet vinegar. I've grabbed myself a lemon from the garden. I'm just going to slice this up into maybe four pieces. Give it a little squeeze, get some of the juice out, but I'm also going to pop the whole lemons in with my sauce. Place that on the stove on a medium to high heat and we're just going to bring this up to a rolling simmer and let it simmer away for about 20 minutes to let the sugars develop and to break down the tomatoes into a pulp. A word on the fruit and the vegetable ingredients. I'm actually using these little crab apples. They're like a cooking apple. They're sour, you really can't eat them, but they're great for recipes like this. If you can't get hold of cooking apples, just get a Granny Smith, that'll be absolutely fine. We're using swede, which I think the Americans call a rutabaga. I'm not sure if I've said that correctly. Comment down below if I have. But all of those ingredients, the swede, the apple, the carrots, the onions, the cauliflower, they all have to be diced up very small like they would be if you know your Branston pickle. And of course we are using dates as well for a sort of sweet richness to the sauce. Now you can see our sweet tomato sauce here is simmering away. I need to go for probably another 10 minutes before we've developed the flavors that I want. So we're now gonna take that off the heat. The lemon and the peels were in there to slow down the caramelization of the sugars and to have a chemical process uh, to create an inverted or simple syrup. They've done their job now so we can take those out. An important thing that I forgot to film but I must make a note of here is when I took the lemons out of the sauce I thought the liquid had gone down a little bit lower than I would like so I added in maybe about half a cup, three quarters of a cup more of the malted vinegar and probably about half a teaspoon of salt as well so don't forget I'll make a note of that on the recipe. We want to blend this up whether you use a stick blender or a regular blender I'm going to blend it to a nice smooth sauce. Now that is a lovely, rich, smooth sauce. Into the sauce, we're going to add our swede, our diced carrots, our diced courgettes or zucchinis, the diced onions, cauliflower, our tart apples, the chopped up dates, and our minced garlic. Now it looks like a lot. It is gonna break down a little bit as it cooks. I'm gonna give it a stir around before we pop this onto the stove. Now bring this back over to the stove and we want to bring that up to a simmer and then we're going to let it cook for about an hour and a half, maybe just a little bit under. What I want to see is the carrots and the swede particularly to get very translucent and start to absorb the moisture and then it's ready to take off the heat. My Branston pickle has been on for about an hour and I think the sweet and the carrot is just about ready. The sauce down there looks lovely and thick and rich. 
The next stage is we want to take a couple of teaspoons of cornstarch or corn flour, whatever you call it. I'm going to put a quarter of a cup of water, give it a little mix through to get any lumps out and then I'm going to pour it in with my pickle. Now this will make sure that the pickle sauce gets nice and thick. Now we need to pop that back on the stove and let that simmer for another 20 minutes. The Branston pickle is ready and I'm going to be putting it into these pint glasses or 500 ml mason jars, which I've sterilized of course, and we're going to find out together how much we've made. I'm going to use a ladle to get the pickle out of the pan and then straight into my sterilized jar. That looks about perfect. Right, the second Kilner jar. Whoops, I'm getting it over the edge. Never mind, I'm sure that can be some tasters. So all in all, we got three 500 ml or one pint jars of Branson pickle. That one's a little bit hot. I better put it down much as you'd like to. You cannot tuck into this Branson pickle straight away. Like everything good, it takes a little while to mature. I would say about two weeks and even longer. If you want a really good pickle, leave it for a few months. But I know you're not going to wait that long. I'm not going to be able to wait that long before we tuck in. So I hope you enjoy making Branson Pickle with me on Steve's Kitchen. If you've enjoyed the show, let me know in the comments down below and share the love. Give this the thumbs up and we will see you very shortly. Take care.